2015, I dropped out of university and moved to London. I was a 20 year old kid who had no idea what to do with my life. My parents doubted me, my ex-girlfriend left me, and all I had was my low paying barista job to pay the bills. I kept thinking about skills I could learn to make an income online without having to go to university and spend four years and thousands of pounds on a degree. I wanted a creative job that I could do from anywhere in the world without being confined to an office, a chair or a desk. After months of thinking and researching, I went to a bookstore called Barnes & Noble in London where I found a book about front-end development. Flipping through the pages reminded me of a guy I knew in Romania who was a front-end developer as well. He was making a fortune selling websites, living in a penthouse in the city center of Bucharest by himself and he was only 17 years old. My brain kind of started piecing things together. If that guy could do it, why couldn't I? So I bought the book and my journey began. It took me nine months to go from knowing nothing about code to being employed and it wasn't an easy fit. My background was in arts and I spent my time painting, drawing, sculpting and making music. I was terrible at sciences, maths, physics and chemistry. I started from the bottom, probably worse off than most of you watching, but if I made it, you can make it too. Let's dive into it. Before we get into the video, we need to understand what you are building towards. You want to become a programmer, a web developer, not a web designer. There is a big misconception among beginners that web designers and web developers are the same. These two fields of work use the same type of tech to a degree, but the outcomes are entirely different. If you go down the web designer route, you'll need to learn design, copywriting, marketing, sales, SEO and more. But as a web developer, you'll need to become stronger as a programmer. The main fundamental skill you need to learn as a web developer is programming in JavaScript. The cool thing about JavaScript is that if you learn how to use it and master it, you can go into other industries such as mobile development where you'll be developing apps for iOS and Android or app development for Windows, OS X or Linux. If you are more of a data oriented person, you can learn more about servers. So JavaScript is like a gateway drug for programmers and if you learn how to program in JavaScript, you can learn other languages too. You can learn Python and do data science and AI, or you could learn Solidity and create smart contracts on the blockchain. There are so many opportunities if you learn this fundamental skill, which is JavaScript and programming overall. So how do you go about learning JavaScript? In my opinion, there are a few phases. The first phase is getting down the syntax. Many people say that syntax is not important, and to a certain degree, I agree with them, it's more about the logic. But for a complete beginner, getting down the syntax is probably the most important thing you could do. Why? Because if you learn the syntax and are comfortable writing code without thinking about it, you can use your brain's processing power to solve problems. If you are preoccupied with remembering how to write a function, variable or if else statement, you won't get very far and you'll get stuck quickly. So if you're a complete beginner, make sure you know your syntax, practice a lot. The code you write and the problems you solve don't even matter at first. Just write code until you don't have to think about the syntax and then you'll start to understand how the pieces fit together. The next phase is practicing algorithmic thinking, which is, sounds more complex than it is. And algorithmic thinking is simplifying your thinking to a level where a computer can understand your ideas. In this process, you will start to think like a computer rather than thinking like a human. For example, let's consider the simple act of lifting this SSD. You take this action for granted, but your brain is actually performing many calculations to lift this SSD from the table. Let's examine this further. The first step is to determine the SSD location in relation to your hand. You figure out where the SSD is, then where your hand is, and use coordinates to determine the SSD position in space. You establish the X, Y, Z axis of the SSD, and based on this information, you can deduce which muscles to flex to lift your hand up. Next, you need to determine when to stop lifting your hand and start moving it towards the SSD. When your hand touches the SSD, it sends a signal to your brain prompting you to stop moving your hand and start grabbing the SSD. As you can see, many steps are happening behind the scenes and you are not consciously aware of them. And if you learn how to break down problems like this, you'll be able to create any kind of application you want. If you smash the like button right now, what do you think will happen? Well, there is an event listener on that button that listens for a click. Once you click the button, you send the request to a server, which adds one to the current number of likes. Then it returns the updated number of likes on the screen and then 
Give it a try now and let me know if it worked or not. Once you're proficient in JavaScript and feel comfortable with it, you likely become annoyed by its limitations. At that point, it's time for you to learn a library or a framework. Libraries and frameworks allow you to do more with the base language. There are people who try to do complex things and figure out ways to patch together different functionalities, then serve them to you as a library or a framework. One of these libraries you'll want to look into is called React. It's trendy and there are many job opportunities for those who know this library. By no means is this an exhaustive list of skills, but it should give you an idea and an overview of what you need to learn to become a front-end developer. The secret to learning JavaScript and React is to build projects. Your first project could be a simple counter app. Imagine a button that you press and the number increases, similar to the like button here on YouTube. That's your first project. From there, you'll build more complex things and become accustomed to increasing complexity and difficulty. Remember, like, Programming won't get easier, you'll just get better. As you improve, you'll be faced with more complex problems to solve, which will ultimately lead to career opportunities and growth. Another essential skill for a front-end developer is the ability to communicate and be a team player. The front-end is a significant part of the equation, but being part of a software company means you need to communicate with back-end developers, database developers, scrum masters, project owners, managers, and other non-tech savvy stakeholders. You need to express your technical ideas to non-tech people and those working in other areas of technology. Another skill you should learn is working with Git, a tool that helps developers collaborate on large code bases without interfering with other people's work. Okay? Imagine an application like a massive Google Docs where everyone contributes. Someone fixes typos, another adds a paragraph, and someone else rephrases a title. A tool like Git helps prevent destruction of others' work in a nutshell. Okay? Again, this list is not exhaustive, but it should give you a rough idea of what you need to learn to become a front-end developer. Learn from trial and error, participating in software companies, teaching others programming and observing others. Be curious, question everything, and never take anything for granted. This curiosity will propel you forward okay, in your software development career. If you are looking to fast track your career and become a front-end developer, I invite you to apply for my mentorship program. This program is for you if you are a complete beginner and don't want to waste your time trying to figure out the best resources to learn from, the right roadmap, and need support and guidance throughout your journey. This is also for you if you have some experience and have been coding for a while, but you feel stuck and don't know what apps to build. If you feel like everything is random and you can't predict what you need to do next, or if you are unsure of your skill level or what projects to build, this mentorship is for you. Additionally, if you've completed a bootcamp and feel like you don't know enough, or if you've been applying for jobs for a couple of years without receiving any responses, this program is also for you. These situations usually occur due to a lack of technical skills. And if we address these issues in my mentorship program, you'll start getting more interviews and job offers leading to a successful front-end developer career. So, if you like this video and are interested in mentorship, click the link in the description and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.